Hi everyone, I'm uh, Dr. John Higney from Carlton Music. Um, Carlton is perhaps the most diverse and inclusive music department uh, in Canada. We are really, um, we do uh, traditional areas of study like classical music and jazz, for example, very, very well, but we were among the first, again, if not the first, um, to uh, do extensive work in studies in popular music and world musics. Uh, and in fact, some of the uh, most uh, uh, significant scholars in the field of popular music um, were right here at Carleton, including uh, um, Professor Emeritus uh, 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 Dr. John Shepard. Really, really uh, important work. Um, our program, uh, we have three elements to it. We do um, the B Music Honors, um, which is a performance degree, which Rebecca is in. Um, and as I was saying, we are really diverse. We do classical and jazz like most schools, but we also have, again, speaking of innovation and inclusivity, um, we have a singer-songwriter stream as well, of which um, uh, it's, it's really quite successful and it's been running now for seven or eight years. We've graduated several cohorts and, and um, it's really, really an excellent and interesting uh, program for many people. Most schools really take people on quite traditional instruments. Um, we do that and we do it very well um, in terms of, of piano and uh, you know strings and winds and, and uh, classical guitar and so on. But we have people who major in electric guitar, for example, or electric bass. Um, we have people um, who throughout their major um, might actually be say principally a jazz pianist who also get to study uh, classical piano. Um, we also uh, have people studying on uh, Celtic instruments. We've graduated um, two bagpipers in one year. I would like to see any other Canadian university who can say they've done that. Um, we graduated um, uh, fiddlers um, and we also have people studying non-Western instruments as well. Um, so it's a very diverse program. In addition uh, to the performance side, uh, of course, like every school, we offer uh, courses in music theory and analysis, musicology, composition, ethnomusicology. We are among the uh, leading centers for studies of Canadian music in the country. And this is a, a legacy go that goes back to Professor Emerita, um, uh, Professor um, L um, uh, Keeler, Elaine Keeler one of the most important uh, scholars in that field. And also we are very strong in cultural theory as well, not only at the undergraduate level, but also in our MA program. In addition to the uh, the program that we have, um, the, B, the Bachelor of uh, Music Honors, we also have the Bachelor of Arts in Music Honors, which is basically all of those course areas that I talked about, except for performance, and for some people, they want to study musicology and uh, music history um, and not so much the performance side. And in that regard, it's actually a similar um, to the program uh, that Morgan just described. In fact, it's very, very similar in terms of the way we situate musical uh, practices and cultural practices in, in many, many contexts. Um, and we also have a BA Arts General in Music as well. So. After that rather lengthy uh, introduction, I am absolutely delighted to introduce you to Rebecca. Uh, Rebecca is a fine saxophonist and student in our program, and I'm really excited to uh, interview her this afternoon. Uh, as ever, great to see you, Rebecca. How are you this afternoon? Hi, I'm well, John. Thanks for having me. Wonderful. It's absolutely my pleasure. Let's get right to it. Why did you choose Carlton? I choose Carleton, um, chose Carleton because of the campus. Honestly, whenever I went to the campus, it was so beautiful and it was such um, a community among itself. And yeah, and my family went to Carleton too. So I kind of had that connection already. Oh, that's cool. That's actually quite a common story. That's great. Yeah, I've seen it. I know on many recruiting events that quite frequently I'm talking to students and uh, it comes up very quickly that uh, not only in some case one parent, but actually often two. Great. Yeah. Cool. Now, when you came to Carlton, did you come to Carlton um, for music? No. So funny thing, um, I came to Carlton in 2016 and I was in the criminology program. Um, I did a semester in criminology and I just kind of decided it wasn't for me. I was I was looking for something else. And so I auditioned that um, December uh, into the music program and got in for the January of the following semester. And that's kind of where my music journey started. So 
Great. That's actually yeah. a fairly common one where we actually see people, you know, come into a program uh, and uh, the criminology program is wonderful, by the way. It, mm -hmm. It's just that sometimes certain things don't don't fit, you know, and you realize once you, you know, get into the program that it's not for you and uh, and you make that shift. And in fact, that trajectory that you did where you uh, switch over in the uh, in the fall or sorry, at the end of the fall term is really common and we will have people doing that again uh, uh, really right now. Now, I know there's an awful lot going on in the music degree and there's so many different different things that you all are involved with. Um, uh, later, I think we might talk about um, about some of those things, certainly. But of all of the things that you did during your degree thus far, which do you think is the thing that you would be the most proudest of doing? I would definitely have to say um, competing last spring in Boston. Um, I had the opportunity of going down to the New England Conservatory of Music and competing with my saxophone quartet. Um, and yeah, that was just an incredible experience. It was before the pandemic hit, so I'm just so grateful to have had that experience. It was called the International Chamber of Competition. Um, again, it was at New England Conservatory, and basically there was three rounds. So there was um, a pl preliminary round, excuse me, and um, that was a recorded audition that you had to send in before you even went to Boston. Um, and so we did that. I remember we were right down to the wire for the deadline. Um, for that submission, um, but we got it done. We actually um, filmed and recorded that um, in KM Theater at Carleton. And so once we got past the, the first round, um, we went down to Boston and we spent three, yeah, four, three or four days down there and uh, got to compete in the semifinal round. Um, very nerve wracking experience, um, but just kind of surreal, really. And I just remember the feeling when we heard uh, we made it into the finals that were on the Sunday. Um, yeah, like proudest moment. I was just so proud of just the quartet and kind of how hard we had um, worked to get there. And just, um, yeah, it's really actually really nice to revisit those memories. So it, it really was a remarkable thing. And I mean, that is um, uh, really the you know the the result of so much hard work by your group and also by uh, um, the um, one of our instructors and ensemble uh, um, leaders and who would that be? Mike Tremblay. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, to give you a sense, folks, this is this is the saxophone quartet um, equivalent of I don't know going to the Stanley Cup. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it really it really was it was an amazing achievement. Yeah. Now. As I was saying a little while ago, our program is really, really diverse, and there's a, uh, and we do a lot of things. Um, of all of the courses that you've taken at Carleton, and you're coming toward the the end of your degree now, um, mm -hmm. which has been your favorite? I know that's a tough question, and why? It's a hard question. I don't think I could narrow it down to just one course. There are so many that have been like instrumental in just my growth as a musician and development. I think one that was really stood out for me was um, Tonal Counterpoint. Um, I took that with Dr. James McGowan and it was a, it's a fourth year course um, and it really goes uh, into in-depth counterpoint and it's a really heavy theory course that was just incredible for me to take, especially as a jazz musician. Um, I've really been studying jazz harmony throughout my degree. And so to be able to study classical as well and see how that kind of, um, you know, translates is, it was really incredible. Yeah, that is such an interesting course. And and uh, Dr. McGowan is a, a, an absolutely wonderful uh, theory okay. teacher and also composer and classical and jazz pianist, you know, so so yeah. you're in such you're in such just absolutely strong, you know, hands there. Um, I, I love also the idea that you know that you have the opportunity as a musician who plays a lot of uh, jazz um, to take these experiences, incorporate uh, uh, that, you know, eventually down the road into into your your practice as a musician. Would there be any other courses that the uh, that uh, that are on more on the performance side that were interesting? Definitely. Yeah. Last last year in my third year of study, I got to do two semesters of a specialized study, and um, I'm a saxophone player, so I was able to do um, study in the fall semester clarinet, 
Um, and then in the winter semester flute, and these are really important woodwind doubling instruments. If you're a saxophone player, you, you need to be able to um, know how to play uh, flute and clarinet and piccolo. Um, so that was just incredible uh, last year to, you know, get really three and a half solid months on either instrument. Um, just amazing instruction and that really, really enhanced um, the performance aspect of my degree. That's one of the cool things about our program is that people have that opportunity to to not only really concentrate on their areas of interest, uh, but to really or the principal areas of, of interest rather, but to really focus also on um, related areas that that make you a a, a very you know more rounded uh, uh, musician. And I'm thinking. Uh, of the, the many practical applications of that kind of study that you did um, in that, you know, as a musician playing out, say, for example, in uh, in the world of uh, of uh, music theater, for example, or in pit bands, yeah. having the having. Yeah, having the ability to uh, to work on various instruments is super important. And it also makes me think of a student um, who's actually very similar to you, um, uh, who also was a saxophone student who did pretty much the same thing that you did and his end game was he was studying music education you probably know who i'm talking about yeah and, uh, yeah and they uh, and they went on to study music education and they wanted those other instruments as uh, other teachable instruments yeah mm -hmm. very very valuable now we meant you mentioned specialized studies and that was a performance specialized studies yeah, I, I know. I know that you are actually taking another one because, as undergraduate supervisor, I'm, I <laughs> oversee these. Can you tell me a little bit about the sort of academic side of things with regard to specialized studies? Definitely. Yeah. So this semester, I've actually gotten the opportunity to take a specialized study in networked music with Dr. Ellen Waterman, and um, it's been a really, really incredible learning process. And kind of on the academic side of things, I've actually gotten. Um, the chance to do a small research project within the course, which has been just amazing to be able to get that experience and um, kind of see how it, what what um, developing a research project is like. And so networked music is basically um, what is kind of what we're doing now that um, everything's online. So discovering how we can um, play music together in a real time um, environment on something like Zoom or another platform. And so it has been just really amazing to be able to be a part of that research and um, to be learning about that field. That research, um, I, I can tell you, uh, I can uh, tell everyone out here, uh, grew out of a project called OMER or Online Music Ensemble Research that started in the summer. And as soon as uh, um, uh, COVID hit, we actually, uh, everyone, support staff, faculty, literally the week that things shut down, started on figuring out how we were going to mount the music program in, in this this year. And OMER was a way of working through um, uh, a whole range of projects. And uh, Rebecca actually was involved in three different ensembles that, uh, that actually investigated different ways of looking at uh, um, of online music. So this is very real world stuff. The, uh, mm -hmm. the work that you all did in the, in the uh, summer um, was absolutely invaluable to our pivot online. So this is not only um, uh, abstract, which is absolutely fine, of course, in research, that's a lot of what we do, but this has a very real world impact on, on the running of our program. Amazing yes. work. Yeah, definitely. The ensembles this semester have run so smoothly. Thank you to this research in the summer. Definitely. And again, we are we, a lot of schools did not do what we did. Uh, um, we really, uh, uh, you know, really kept things uh, on online like that. Now, again, things are really, really varied in this program, Rebecca. Um, there's the performance side of things where and the academic side and through various streams, you can actually, you know, really kind of carve your own way where your degree is different, say, than mine if I were studying as a, a, a guitarist um, through specialized studies and special topics courses and so on. Um, of all of the things that you do, what are some of the, the skills and, and types of skills that, that really you have developed through your studies in music at Carleton? Hmm. Yeah, I think that there's a there's a wide range of skills that I've definitely developed. I on the performance end of things, learning um, how to practice, what mindset I need to have when I'm practicing, and um, what effective practice kind of looks like uh, has been just 
you know, really, uh, I, I don't know, so important in just in my development as a as a player and kind of learning how to how to navigate that. That's that's really an amazing thing. And um, again, the idea of practice is something that I, I don't think a lot of people fully realize how much work um, as music students we, we put into the practical side of things. I know when I was a student that for me, um, maintenance of my repertory was get close closing in on about three hours a day. Mm -hmm. That's that's kind of maintenance. That's getting things up. And I would go beyond that. Uh, I was kind of an obsessive, but that's that's you know often that's what we do. Um, and that of course requires not only dedication. It, can you speak to to organization and how organization fits into into uh, um, uh, the work as a music student? Yeah, definitely. I think time management is something I have totally been learning throughout my degree and will continue to learn, but it's a skill and like a bunch of skills that will um, be with me for life. Um, learning how to prioritize um, practicing assignments, all the different things you have to do in your undergrad. Um, it, yeah, that's a <laughs> it's a big one learning how to manage your time. And, and I think especially too during this pandemic, things look a lot different and yep. just kind of learning um, how to take care of yourself in a time like this, but also how to be disciplined in your schoolwork when video lectures are online and, you know, you don't have to tune in for a class, maybe if it's an asynchronous class. So, um, yeah, definitely time management is a big one. No, absolutely. And as I was saying, not only are you doing your courses and practicing and uh, taking your lessons, you're also playing in ensembles. Um, and I know over your time at uh, Carlton, you you spend a lot of time with the saxophone quartet, but you've also played in um, a, a fairly wide variety of ensembles as well. Can you tell us a little bit about that? For sure. Yeah. So in addition to saxophone quartet, I've also um, been in jazz ensemble um, with the past director, Mark Ferguson. I think I was able to do three years with him. Um, just incredible, incredible experience learning how to improvise um, in, a, in a live situation and to play with other musicians. Um, I've also taken, um, been in two semesters of choir um, under two different directors, one of which I'm in right now, um, and we're doing it online on Zoom with Antonio Yucca, and he's just incredible um, running rehearsals on Zoom. It's really, um, it's really, really exciting. Um, I've been a part of the West African Rhythm Ensemble. I was able to do a gig with them last year, um, and I was part, part of um, a horn section led by Peter Kankura, and that is a really, really amazing ensemble at Carleton and something that's super unique to the program. It really is. Uh, the West African Rhythm Ensemble is an, an incredibly cool and unique thing. And also the uh, the uh, West African elements certainly play a lot in our musicianship courses as well with Professor Kathy Armstrong. Mm -hmm. uh, just really, really, again, um, uh, a, a, another example of the kind of innovative way that we've been approaching music uh, in an inclusive way for such a long time. Um, I'm going to ask you another question. Uh, 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 a quick question that's related to these skills. In addition to the kind of practical things, can you speak to the way um, your courses might have affected and impacted the way that you you think about music and music making? Mm -hmm. Definitely. I think um, I took a course in second year um, called Music of the World's Peoples, and it gives just kind of an overview of different world musics. And it's that was a really a really amazing course to take because it really opened my mind to all the different musics that there are and especially kind of in Canada um, a lot of western um, music is built around notation um, and just so learning that there's so many different ways of um, teaching music of learning music so many different traditions um, it's really opened my mind yeah no, that, that's that's amazing and and you know not only um, uh, will these courses open up these really interesting and important cultural contexts? Um, the kind of tools of critical thinking that uh, that are a big part of these courses really are significant as well, would you say? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Just what, whenever I even hear, um, right now I'm, I'm able to be part of a jam on Friday night that uh, 
that we do some free improvised music over Zoom because that's um, a music that really lends itself well to, to online music making. And so just kind of um, exploring that genre has been really interesting and has definitely come out of, out of uh, the mindset that my courses have given me. That's really cool. And I'm thinking actually the last lecture in jazz history, which you are in with me, yeah. in fact, was literally on uh, on uh, avant-garde and improvised musics. Yeah. Now, I, I know it's only uh, uh, the end of the fall semester and there's an awful lot on everyone's mind. But at some point we all have to take, you know, a, a moment and think, what what am I going to do with this degree and where am I going to get to where I, I want to be like um, how am I going to to take this experience and uh, and uh, and move forward with it again that's that's just a tiny question to throw at you yes <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> no pressure um, yeah I'm definitely looking at doing a master's degree I'm super interested in pursuing music I'm not sure what kind of area I'd like to specialize in um, whether it would be uh, conducting or composition, writing for film. I'm really interested in music pedagogy, teaching, mm -hmm. um, whether it's more of kind of like um, the master's program at Carleton, the arts and culture and looking at music in a cultural context. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of exploring my options and I really think um, just that the courses I'm taking are, are kind of helping me narrow down my, my focus and yeah. That, that, that's amazing. And I'm thinking uh, there are just so many things that you actually could apply this to. Like I know a lot of the skills, uh, whether it's research and writing and just the discipline of, uh, of being a, a, a musician and becoming a professional musician. So many of these things are transferable to a, a ton of other fields. And, you know, in addition to the work within the fields that you mentioned uh, a, a second ago, I know a ton of our students who have gone into music education, for example, uh, and and realizing, hey, you know, um, or or law, and the idea is, look, you know, I I know that I'm going to go into a professional program afterward. I'm going to do my foundational degree in something that I love. That's going to be part of my life and experience forever. You know, so it's a. Uh, um, I, I love seeing you know people thinking about the the options. Certainly at this stage, it's exciting. Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah. Great. Well, I think that's all I have for you this afternoon, Rebecca. Thank you so much. As ever, it is always a delight chatting with you. Thanks. Thank you so much.